Hi there folks, welcome back to the IBN and Efficient channel. It's been so long since I've done one of these, I can barely remember what to do. Uh, thank you very much for joining us again. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Really appreciate you being here. If you're a current subscriber, if you've been sub for a while, it's nice to see you again. Apologies, it's been a wee while since IBN and I've come out and done this. We've had a pretty manic six weeks. Uh, we've both been pretty poorly at different times. Lots of work going on, lots of interesting stuff going on. We just haven't had time to get to the channel, but we're here now. Well, I'm here now anyway. I'd be still tucked up in bed feeling a bit poorly. And I've come out to do some grayling fishing. And actually, I think this is going to be the first grayling vlog of the season so far. I don't know about you guys. I've found this season pretty tough so far. It's been a really strange one. I mean, today's a great example. It's the third week in November now. It's 14 degrees. It's warm. It's really, really warm. It hasn't really rained properly at all. The water temperatures are still relatively high for this time of year. And the grayling haven't shoaled, which makes it a lot harder to catch them, especially when you throw in the fact that the waters are very clear because it hasn't rained. The waters are very low because it hasn't rained. It's a perfect storm of difficult grayling conditions and it's not been easy so far. Let me know in the comments section how you guys have been getting on. Because I must admit, I've found the start of this grayling season pretty tough. And the fact that these grayling haven't shoaled yet has made me think about the type of venues that I might be better off fishing. So the, the bigger rivers have been hard. I've found them harder anyway. There's so much more space in those rivers for the grayling to be spread out. They could be anywhere across most of the river channel. And it's made me think maybe I ought to have a look at some smaller waters. So that's exactly what I've done. I'm on a dove tributary today, a nice small water, only a couple of minutes from our front door. I'm going to have a little search of this place. It's very low, it's very clear, it's not a venue I know very well at all. In fact, I fished it once for about an hour and a half a couple of weeks ago. But I'm going to give it a good go, show you guys how I go about doing it, and hopefully we'll find a few fish on the way. Let's go and have a look. In terms of kit, I've only got one rod with me. I've bought a 10 foot 3 weight nymphing rod that I've got set up on a French leader. Actually, it's our high-vis urine nymph in a box kit, throwing a shameless plug in there. I've got three flies. I've got a deep purple on the point, a pink shrimp on the middle dropper and one of my baby pinks on the top dropper. I didn't want to bring too much kit today. It's only, a, it's only a small river. I haven't got loads of time. I think what I've got with me will be enough. I think it's going to be more about finding fish than it is about having loads of different kit items with me. As I said, I did fish this place briefly a couple of weeks ago. So I've got a rough idea of what's going on. One of the reasons that I've gone for a, a longer bicolored mono, monofilament indicator is that actually it's incredibly, oh, that was a little tap, it's incredibly deep in some places, this little river. Uh, I found areas that I definitely couldn't wade through. So actually having a, having a bit more reach with the indicator would just give me chances to fish those slightly deeper pockets. And the subject of depth already, don't feel like I'm getting down here. It could be a case here for changing that point fly. It's a beautiful little river, it's nice and... Oh, there's a fish. <laughs> that didn't take long. That's a grayling as well. What's he taking? Looks like the pink shrimp. Yeah, that's the pink shrimp. That's a good start. We like to get one on the board early. There we go. That's cool. There, ooh, he's not gonna sit still for me. There we go, first one of the day. Nice grayling. Good to get on the mark early. I was starting to think there that I perhaps wasn't getting quite down deep enough, but maybe I was. Ooh, being so warm at the moment, maybe it doesn't need to. Perhaps I'm overstating the importance of that. So I'm retrieving through the drift because I don't want to have to lift the rod too high up. I haven't got a lot of space here. Shooting line out, retrieving through the drift, trying to keep contact. Oh, that was, that was a take. Trying to keep contact with that point fly. Very, very close to putting heavier point fly on here. Just would just like a bit more riverbed contact early. Okay, so I was on a, a three mil tungsten bead. I'm now on a three and a half let's just see if this gets me down a bit faster yeah there we go better contact it's not an easy spot to make a cast here i've got a tree in front of me that looks like peril i've got these brambles on my left hand side that look like danger oh that might have been a little tap oh, i knew that was gonna happen at some point i'm trying to hook it round these brambles but that increases the risk of me hitting them keep popping that up there this feels really fishy oh that was a fish Oh God, I've got to be careful of these trees. Danger everywhere here. Figure of eight retrieving really quickly. That's how I'm trying to keep contact rather than moving the rod too much, which is, I think it's just going to get me in trouble. I'm just going to figure of eight like fury to try and keep in touch with the flies. Clear water, I've gone for reasonably natural colored flies. Oh, <laughs> that's a fish. There we go. That works all right. Just drop down a little bit. I thought there were more fish up there. I've definitely missed a few takes in the last few minutes. There we go, he's on the point fly as well, so that was a good change. Slightly bigger than the first one. He's not going to win the Grayling World Championships, but we'll take him from a little river. Yeah, I don't feel out of it in this pool just yet. I still think there's going to be a couple more in here for me, as long as I can make good casting. 
get good drifts here. I think I'll catch more out of here. It's difficult to keep contact because I've just got nowhere to go with the rod. I can't go up because of the tree above me. I can't really go sideways because I end up hitting the far bank. So tricky, tricky first pull this. There's a fish. There we go. They are still up there. There's more fish up there for me. This is a nice start. So he's on the top dropper this time. He's on the baby pink. So nice, nice even spread. One on each fly so far. Nice. Not a lot between these three, they're like peas in a pod. But for the first five minutes fishing, this is a pretty good start. Keep popping that back up here, I think. I think there's going to be more fish up there for me. I feel like I've missed quite a lot of little bumps and knocks. I'm finding it very, very hard um, to get good contact with the flies and strike effectively. I've just got nowhere to go at all. I wish these brambles weren't here on my left. It'd make things so much easier. Oh, he says as he hits the brambles. <laughs> Let's go and get that. Okay, so I made a bit of a mess of that in the end. Totally spoiled it for the better water at the top, but that's okay. I think if you'd offered me three fish out of that pool at the start of the session, I'd have probably snapped your hand off for it. So rather than dwelling on that too much, we'll keep moving up. Found a lovely deep hole here. Slightly different piece of water to what we were in before, but just as fishy looking. Um, it's, it's a lot calmer than what I was in before. I'm a little bit worried that maybe with the water being low and clear, it's possible I've already upset some of these fish. But I'm going to give it a good going over anyway. I've not changed anything about the rig. It's pretty deep up here. So I've stuck with, stuck with that slightly heavier point fly. I've stuck with the two droppers that I had on before. That was the take. There's just a bit more onus on me to shoot this a bit further this time. It's the advantage of using that French leader, of course, is you can, you can get reasonable distance with it. That's nice. Come on, fish, where are you? Confident here. Is that a fish? It is, it's a very small one, but it is a fish. Tiny little grayling. But that means there could be a few up there. We'll get him straight back. He's on that pink shrimp on the middle dropper. Back you go, bud. I'm looking forward to fishing this place a little bit later in the year when there's a bit more water in it and it's carrying a bit more colour. Because it's so clear at the moment, I feel like I've got to stay away from these fish a little bit to catch them. It is very, very clear, and this particular pool is very slow as well, so it feels like the kind of spot where you could easily end up upsetting these fish from quite long distance. I mean, it's quite possible I already have. That's nice, apart from the bit where the... Oh God, so I've got a fish on, and we're in the tree. <laughs> Another one of those tiny little grayling. That all got a bit hectic for a second. Same size as the other guy. Doing okay here, catching a few fish. It's tough, this is te technical fishing, but I'm catching a couple, I'm happy with this. I've just realised, you may or may not be able to see it on the, on the GoPro. It's been so mild this autumn, this tree in front of me is absolutely covered in buds. It's actually trying, <laughs> it's trying to grow again. Gives you an idea of how mild this autumn's been. Righty, so there's a whirlpool upstream that kind of caught my eye, and I was walking up the river towards it fairly quickly. But I've actually seen grayling. I can see grayling in this hole in front of me. So rather than walk straight through them, I'd be pretty bonkers not to give these guys a quick go. Now I'm crouched down, I can't see them. But I know they're there. I saw at least two fish. There could have been a third one. So we'll give this a, we'll give this a good couple of drifts through and just see if we can pick a couple out of this little pocket. It's only shallow. It's only 18 inches deep there, so I don't need to... I don't need to drop any indicator in here. Oh, there's a fish following that. Yep, got him. <laughs> I watched him chase that downstream. <laughs> all right, how do I land him now? Uh, I've got no space anywhere. Panic, panic. I think I can get the rod up above my left shoulder a little bit. There we go, that was cool. I think the fly's fallen out, actually. He took the point fly. Come on, bud. There we go. Another one about the same size as the, as the fish from the first pool. One out there was pretty fun. It was nice to sight that fish, but I had to get pretty close to them. So I've started to make a bit more progress up towards the weir I was talking about. Again, nice and overgrown. There's a, there's a lot of stuff to go wrong here, but I feel like if I can get good quality casts up there, decent drifts, I've got a real chance of a good fish in here somewhere. There's depth, there's oxygen. Oh, that was a take straight away. <laughs> there's depth, there's oxygen. Again, I'm a bit stuck in terms of what I can do with the rod, so I'm having to use the figure of eight retrieve to maintain any great contact with the flies. 
There we go. There we go. Well, that didn't take long. Couple of casts in the right place. Good drifts. Sensible flies. That all works pretty nicely. Might be a slightly larger fish, is it? On the point? No. About the same size as the as the others we've been catching, but really strong. <laughs> He's going for it. Freaking turbo grayling. Come on, Dal. Don't go up there. Scare all the others off. Come on, bud. That'll look. There we go. That's cool. There's going to be fish up here for me. So he was on the point fly, but the fly's just fallen out. Nice fish. Roughly the same size as the others. Let's see if we can pop this back up there. Nice long cast with a bit of shoot. Get that indicator up. It's going through okay. Is that a fish? That's a stick. That felt really fishy. That was an impressive stick. Oh, that's the bottom. Oh, that's the bottom. And I've actually got a fish on the middle dropper. Is he still on? Has he come off? Yeah, he's still on. Right, I'm going to need to move up a little bit, try and shake this off that snag. I certainly don't want to leave a, a fish tethered. Okay, so the, the tethered fish is off. Oh, I really don't want to go out here, but I'm going to have to go and kick that off. I just know that I'm ruining good water by doing this. What I also know now, that I didn't know before, it's bloody deep up there, so I definitely wasn't getting down with the rig I had on before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back off. Just pause for a few minutes here, let that pool settle down. Go on to a heavier point fly, and we'll go again. Okay, so I've been really patient here. I've got away, got out of here for probably five minutes or so. When I've sent a few messages, did a bit of Facebooking, and I've come back with a much heavier point fly. I've got one of the four mil point flies from our grayling packs on there. I'm going to try and get this a bit further down because one thing's for sure, I was nowhere near the riverbed before. There's a flipping snag. <laughs> I thought for a second that was a fish. There was a lovely soft feeling to it, but it's not. But that just showed me I'm getting down a bit earlier than I was before. Let's try that again. Lots of shoot up here. Big advantage, obviously, the heavier flies. I can shoot it a bit further. There should definitely be fish in this run. It's whether or not I've already knackered it. Yeah, <laughs> that was a take. I just had the tiniest, tiniest little knock there. There he goes. Tiniest little knock that I thought, to be honest, was the point fly just tripping the riverbed. And uh, it wasn't. It was fish. Not the one we're after, though. I reckon there should be a biggie in here for me somewhere. Do you know what? I'm actually considering going much heavier on that point fly. In fact, I am going to go much heavier on the point fly. I'm still not getting down. I'm going to try the big dog. I'm going to go for the five and a half mil through here. The biggest, the biggest fly in the grayling pack. Right, I'll put that five and a half mil on. My big worry about this actually is keeping it moving because I'm not sure there's enough power there to really, really get that motor in through. But to a certain extent, I can control that with the retrieve, with the rod tip. I haven't got anything heavier in the box, so it's going to have to do. One thing for sure, I am finding the riverbed far faster than I was previously. That shouldn't be a shock. Come on, where are you? Oh, well, that's the bottom. <laughs> that was always going to be the risk with this bigger fly. Okay, so I have actually got a fish on as well. I think the same thing has happened before, has happened again. The point fly has snagged and one of the droppers has been eaten. It's still on, I can still feel it. So I can get that put. Oh, everything came off at the same time. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> now I'm in the tree. All sorts of trouble here. It gives you guys an idea of how deep it is up here. Where is everything? Yes, you did see that right. Yes, it did fall in. Yes, the water did go in the top of the waders. Dang it. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> I think that's the first time I've gone in on this channel and we've been going for three years now. 
So I'm actually pretty happy with that. The old me used to go in every other session, so I've been doing pretty well of late. I did say at the start of the vlog, there are places where this tiny little stream is incredibly deep, uh, and I just found another one. <laughs> uh, the bit that really annoys me about that isn't that I went in, you know, I'm not that wet. The wading belt did its job. I'm just kind of wet around the middle, to be honest, damp legs a little bit. But the bit that's really annoyed me is the fact that I messed up a good pool there. I was snagged up on the bottom. I had a fish on, and actually it felt like a reasonable fish. I was getting some really good, strong head shakes from that fish. And then both the snag and the fish popped at the same time. Flies end up in the tree. I've got to go over and get them. Yeah, and it turns out it's quite deep in that little spot. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I've been fishing for half an hour, maybe 40 minutes now. Caught half a dozen normal sized fish, couple of sprats. This is going pretty well. The conditions are all right. I'm fishing okay. I'm a little bit rusty. I'm having to work hard. You've probably noticed that I'm having to make quite long presentations. I'm trying to use as much of that French leader as possible. Stay away from these fish where I can. It's been pretty tough so far, but I'm really enjoying it. This is technical stuff. I'm not too worried about getting wet and cold because I have something that's going to keep me nice and warm all winter. This is the IB and Andy grading pattern beanie hat, and that is the most seamless way to ask you guys not to forget to go to www.abangling.co.uk forward slash shop. We've got the hats, we've got the grayling flies, we've got the urine infant packs. I've got the shameless plug for the web shop out of the way. Thank you very much for all the support with that. I want to go and find some more fish because I'm really enjoying this. Righty, this looks a beautiful piece of water. Really, really nice run this. I'm looking forward to fishing this. And actually, it's one of the first spots I've found that's got a bit more space around it. <laughs> I've actually got a little bit of room to work here. I've taken that five and a half mil point fly off. We don't need that one. Uh, if I fall in here, I've got real problems. <laughs> let's, let's give this a go. My feeling is they're probably not going to be in the real fast stuff on the outside. They're more likely to be just down these soft edges. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong with it being low and clear. Maybe they are in the faster stuff. We're going to cover this well, put it that way. Put lots of different casts through lots of different areas. Good depth up there, that's for sure. Whoa, that was a take. Missed a couple in here already. There we go. Just a bit further over into the fast stuff. That was a nice take. Couldn't miss that one. There you go. And I don't think it's any different in terms of size to the other fish we've been catching. Just pulling back a wee bit. Putting a bit of a bend in the rod. Just got his head down. That may, maybe he's a touch bigger, not much. It's a nice, strong, healthy fish. So he's on that middle dropper, he's on that pink shrimp. Yeah, it's probably the biggest one of the day. Come on, bud. Oh, hook's just fallen out. There we go. A few more of those would be nice. Okay, so maybe I possibly could go into that slightly faster water. We might just try that again. Oh, I've hit another snag. <laughs> you can tell I haven't done much fishing in the last few weeks. Guys, it's deep, deeper than I thought over here. <laughs> try not to fall in. Okie doke, so that was another pool messed up. I'm doing a pretty good job of that at the moment. Um, I'm not going to dwell on it too much. I mean, the reality is what I'm trying to do is pretty hard, but I feel like it's the right thing to do. Uh, because the water is so low and so clear, I've got to keep some distance between me and these fish. There's only really two ways I could do that, either suspension nymphing or trying to fish the French leader a bit longer. The reason I don't think suspension nymphing is the right thing to do is because of how quickly these drop-offs occur on this little river. I think you'd be forever having to adjust the depth, forever hitting the bottom, striking at nothing. Whereas because I've got this long mono indicator, oh, there's fish, long mono indicator on here. I've got a bit more scope to be able to change the depth. It certainly works in this pool, that's for sure. Oh, he's off. That's take first cast, which is a good sign. Hopefully that means there's going to be a few in here for me. Let's try that again. There we go. There's a fish. So there are some fish over there. That's two takes and two casts just in the eye of the pool that won't let this one tiny little gaze actually fouled just a, uh, yeah fouled just under the chin I reckon he probably tried to eat the fly and got it wrong back you go but okay let's try this again there's clearly a couple of fish over there that's gone a bit further across but that's okay oh why <laughs> that was a hell of a take oh this might be a better fish actually Let's see. I might have gone too early here. Ivy tells me off for this. Yeah, it is a slightly bigger fish, actually. Definitely the biggest fish I've seen so far today. Let's try and get him in before he realises what's going on. There we go. That's nice. Right, so I've just popped the hook out. He took the pink shrimp. Are you going to stay still just for a second for us? 
That's a lovely fish. Definitely the biggest one of the day. He'll be approaching a pound, I reckon. Nice, healthy condition. Right, let's go back into the top of that pool, see if there's another one of those there. Flip that up to the top there. There we go. There we go. Just on the seam. It's another slightly larger fish as well. Not quite as big as the last one, but it's getting there. Let's try and keep that rod out of those trees above me. There we go. Now we're rocking. So the hook's falling out in the net again, but it was on that pink shrimp again. It's incredibly lively, full of energy. Come on, bud, we just want to have a quick look at you. There we go. This is cool. We might, might just be on something here. Let's try that same one again. That was just, just slightly in the faster water. One thing I have noticed in the last kind of 15, 20 minutes, it's gone really dark. It was quite a nice kind of broken, broken cloud blue sky day when I first got here. Just in the space for an hour, it's really clouded over and I've lost quite a lot of light. I'm not entirely sure how much more we're going to get out of today. I didn't start till quite late. I probably didn't get on the waters about, it's probably just gone midday, maybe even a half twelve. So this was never going to be a really long session anyway. But it looks like if that cloud's going to thicken up, it looks like it could be a bit shorter than I anticipated. So try and make the most of the next couple of the pools. I might not get much more fishing in today at this rate. Okay, so it went a little bit quiet in that last pool, so rather than, rather than go through fly changes, I've just moved straight on. I want to try and fish a bit more water. I've dropped myself in a, in a really interesting spot, this. But a little bit different to anything else I've fished so far today. Deeper, slower, kind of stuff you can imagine there being a, a really big fish in rather than, rather than any of those smaller ones. This could be, could be a total red herring on myself, this. Oh, there we go. <laughs> There's a fish. That didn't take long. It's certainly not a really big one compared to compared to the the one I had first out of the last pool. But it's an early fish. He's taken the point fly to the red tag. I was just saying this looks like the kind of pool where I might find a bigger one. Um, and this guy said, "No, no, that's not the case." Little red tag muncher. So as I was just saying, this looks like the kind of pool where I might find some smaller fish rather than the big ones. <laughs> I, need, I need to stop talking so much on these things and just make myself look stupid. Feels like the right spot for good in this. That's on the assumption that there are some bigger fish in here, I must admit. As I said earlier, I don't really fully know what's in this stretch, so I could be, I could be fishing for big fish that don't exist. One thing's for sure, there's plenty of these in here. No shortage of no shortage of 6 to 12 inches. These will keep you amused all day. I think he's on the point fly again. Yeah, he is. He was on the point fly. The point fly's fallen out. It's another one of the <laughs> little flippy flappy ones. Nice fish. We'll take those. Okay, so it looks like the key here may well be getting these flies just kind of up and around this corner slightly. I've, I've overcooked that and drawn those too far in. But that's two takes I've had up there. Just where that bubble line kind of slides around the the far bank so I'm gonna keep working on that oh there's a snag <laughs> one of those days for these things wow it's deep jeez it really drops off while I'm here might be a case here for a couple little bow and arrows just up this bubble line let's see what's through this oh that was a take straight away okay I think we'll try that one again Certainly not an easy casting position. Oh, there we go. <laughs> That's two bow and arrows up there and two takes. So we'll assume from that that we're in the uh, we're in the right area. What's he on? He's on the point fly, taking that red tag. Get in the net. So about the same size as all the others on the point fly. Doesn't really matter how big or small they are. When you're fishing somewhere for the first time, they're all welcome. And I could be on something here with this little spot just around the corner. Okay, let's try that bow and arrow again. That definitely worked. I can see there's a weed bed up there and there's a bit of depth. And I've just brought you guys around the corner a little bit so you can see a bit more of what's going on and what's ahead of me here. I actually have a chance of making a straightforward overhead cast here. Nice streamy bubbly water upstream of me. There's a fish. <laughs> Some lovely looking water just upstream of me here. It's a bit of weed, bit of flow, lots of oxygen. That's a nice grayling actually, that's a decent one. 
We'll try and keep him on. That's the probably going to be the biggest fish of the day if I can keep it on. He's gone for that weed. Come on, none of that. Yeah, nice fish on the point fly again. Just let the rod do the do the playing bit. Come on, in you come. That'll do. That'll do. You. Nice fish. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. This is lovely looking water as well. About the same size as the other bigger fish I had in there. In fact, it might be a little bit bigger than him actually. Yeah, I reckon that is the the biggest fish of the day so far. He's definitely over a pound. Good looking fish, good condition as well. That's what we're after. Great, let's keep trying to make that upstream flip up here. Seems like I can get to take most casts if I can get it far enough upstream. That's nice, just in the fast water it goes over some weed. That's a good drift. Oh, kind of hoping that was going to be a fish. Where the flies gone, there's stuff happening everywhere. It got away with it. First, about the first one of those I've got away with all day. Pinged it out of a snag and it didn't end up in another snag. No. The bites have just dried up a little bit walking up here. I've probably worked up here a bit fast, but conscious I'm running out of light. I want to try and see at least one or two more pools before it goes pitch black. That doesn't feel like it's too far off. So I've burned through probably half a dozen spots really quickly there. I just wanted to fish as much water as possible to try and find out as much about the place as I can with the available light that I've got. Now, the camera's doing a pretty good job of making this look brighter than it is, but actually it's gone pretty dark now. And I reckon I'm probably about done for the day at that. I, I, I don't know how much more I can do with the light I've got left. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with how today's gone. Uh, to turn up to a piece of water, the bottom end of which, the, the bit that I've done most of the fishing, I've never actually been to before. I've never fished it. This has gone all right, I'm quite happy with it. I've learned lots as you always do. Obviously I've learned that in places this river is pretty deep and if you put your foot in the wrong place you can quite easily go for a swim. <laughs> that, was, that was a bit of a shock to the system and actually I'm getting a little bit cold now so I've probably called this about right. Uh, there are good numbers of fish in here and I think it's got potential for some big fish as well. Those deep holes, there could be anything at the bottom of those. So there's a good chance at some point during the winter that I, I think I could have a meet in here with a really good fish. One thing's sure, I'm going to keep trying because I think they're there. The one thing I'll obviously have to wrestle with is did I do the right thing bringing the French leader or should have fished it with fly line and suspension nymph and technique. In truth, I don't know. I think I probably did the right thing. It's a pretty technical fishing situation. You guys let me know. What would you have done? Would you have tried to fish it with an indicator or with a duo rig or would you have gone with a French leader, tossed a Euro nymphing style thing like I did? Guys, really nice to come back out and film some stuff. It's been a while. I'm a little bit rusty, both with the fishing and with the filming, as you've probably noticed, but it's been really fun. I've really enjoyed it. I hope you have too. Please don't forget that the grayling pattern bobble hat, the trout pattern bobble hat, and everything else on the web shop is currently in stock. It's the first time ever we've actually had all the stuff in the web shop in stock at once. The web address is right there. I'll put links in the description and in the comment section to some of the cool stuff that IB and I offer the web shop. Other than that, all I need to do is say thank you to you guys out there in internet land for watching this vlog. Really appreciate it. IB and I will be back again soon with some more fishing and stuff. Take care, folks. Bye bye.